So next we're going to cover exactly how do organisms know how many X chromosomes are active and why don't we run into problems where there's too much uh, transcriptional activity when you have double the amount of chromosomal material. So that's our dosage compensation here. So if we didn't have any sort of dosage compensation, if you were, uh, say, had two X chromosomes, you would have double the uh, gene products of all of those different genes compared to um, a heterogametic individual who just has one copy. Okay? And so there would be some sort of issue there because a lot of these genes on the X chromosome are not just for sex determination, but also for just functioning uh, of metabolism and such. Okay? So we know at least three mechanisms for how um, individuals that have this digamete sex determination system uh, moderate the effects of having two chromosomes. So the first one is in uh, Drosophilia. Okay, what they have is a um, the XY. If you're heterogametic and just have one X chromosome, then everything on that chromosome is upregulated. Okay, due to this uh, dosage compensation complex, so sort of like a general transcription factor, but specifically keyed to the X chromosome that comes in, lands, and then promotes transcription of all the genes along that X chromosome. Okay. So this doesn't have, you have normal transcription in your um, homogametic individual, and you have uh, increased transcription in your heterogametic individual. So this is different in nematodes, so it's um, C. elegans here, where uh, males are XO rather than XY. There is no Y chromosome per se. Um, sex is determined um, specifically just by how many chromosomes you have. Okay, so then in this case, the dosage compensation complex um, grabs onto the, the two Ys that are present and then reduces the transcription on both of the Y chromosomes to bring it down to um, pretty much equal what's on the uh, XO chromosome there. So you get lower transcription on the two chromosomes in nematodes. And that brings us to mammals, okay, where we have um, uh, transcription on the single X chromosome in the male and the, the XY there. But then in the XX, uh, only one chromosome is transcribed. Randomly, uh, one the other X chromosome is basically targeted to be um, bundled up in heterochromatin and is not transcribed, forming a bar body or a lionized body, any of those. And so at any given time, only one X chromosome, either your maternal or your paternal X chromosome, is expressed in any given cell. Okay. So this is called X chromosome inactivation, all right? Uh, lionization, named after Mary Lyon. Yay. Uh, so as your cells divide, one of the two X chromosomes becomes condensed and trans localized, it sort of gets tucked away against the nuclear membrane where it's not transcribed. Now this is random, and the interesting thing is that this happens uh, not at the very beginning when you're a single cell, but when you're like an 8 to 16 cell, usually around 8 cell is where this occurred, where an X chromosome is randomly picked. And then so different cells within your body descended from those different prior cells will either have one of the two X chromosomes transcribed. Okay, and it will remain that way through subsequent cell divisions. So say this one here with the um, blue one tucked up in a way, any cell derived from that is going to have that, um, that blue X chromosome tucked up in a way too. Now about this, since it's not deleted permanently, it's stuff can still be occasionally transcribed off of that chromosome. It's just harder. It's only about a 5% of excellent genes that actually escape this inactivation and are still possible. So it's a 95% um, shutdown of that other X chromosome. Now we have our um, term, uh, colloquially we're going to determine that active chromosome is XA and XI is the inactive, so active and inactive up there. And then we have this um, XIC, okay, the X chromosome inactivation center, which is an actual like region on the chromosome. And then we have a transcript, okay, like a non-coding RNA, it's called EXIST, so standing for specific transcript. Um, and it's just very long, almost 18, 17,000 base pairs here. And so that is actually going to look for, this This gets transcribed, it looks for this X chromosome inactivation center and sort of tucks it up and tags that X chromosome 
to be, become that bar body, all right? So um, this is through epigenetics, okay? This tags and methylates this uh, area on the X chromosome, prompting this inactivation region, and through adding these CPG islands. So the, any sort of CG, 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 CG repeats, okay, end up getting highly methylated, and this silences that chromosome without damaging the DNA. Okay. Now, removing those islands means that you can reactivate that inactive X. It's not a permanent suppression, especially when you, um, in um, germline cells, that there's a reactivation of epigenetic silencing before uh, the meiosis occurs in order to make more gametes. So we can see this visually in calico cats, okay, because the co overall coat color, whether or not your cat has a uh, orange coloration or a black coloration, in addition to a goody striping and white spotting and everything like that, is literally determined by this one gene. Okay, so you have either the, the gene for eumelanin, like true melanin that gives you the dark color, or I think it's like phenomelanin that gives you the orangey color. Okay, and if you're male, you only in, uh, inherit one of these. Okay, so males will either be orange colored or uh, the dark colored, which in an XXY individual, and you could see. Um, a bit of difference. So male calicos are very rare for that reason. And so in a heterozygote here, okay, some cells have the chromosome with the B, uh, the, the, um, darks, the dark allele of the gene inactivated. That's the dark allele inactivated. This is the light allele inactivated. But again, this happens at like eight cells when you're, the, the kitten is about eight cells big. And so different patches, you can see the mosaicism in the female cat um, of where the orange is being expressed because that Y chromosome is active. And then you can see the patches where the black uh, gene is being expressed because that's where the, the cell that um, uh, has that X chromosome being expressed is located. So this happens in both tortoiseshell cats. So see, you can see here she's even more speckled. There's more uh, spread of different cells. So the division here probably happened later, maybe the 16 cell division is where the X chromosome started getting wrapped up, as opposed to this calico, which has pretty definite patches of the orange and black. Now the white is separate. White is um, a different allele that we'll talk about when we get to like population genetics in the cat lab, but that's due to how far the melanocytes that are actually producing this dye have migrated from the dorsal uh, end of the, the animal. Okay. So there's some interesting uh, similarities in, in how X chromosome inactivation has evolved. Um, the split way back between monotremes and then the marsupials and the eutherians. Uh, the marsupials, it's a gene by gene uh, sex determination system and there's no X upregulation at all. Just between the five pairs there, there's um, an awful lot going on. And so over here we see is, well, is X chromosome, is it paternal? Is it incomplete? Is it still being examined? Uh, is there a, a non-coding RNA that's mediating this? Okay, so what we see in marsupials, okay, that the X chromosome that is expressed in the cell is always the paternal one. There is a stage in which that the, the maternal uh, X chromosome is tagged and is always suppressed, and the paternal uh, X chromosome is always, um, is always expressed. Okay? And that there is uh, a little bit of upregulation on the X chromosome to match uh, the gene products on um, some, some of the gene products on the Y chromosome. Uh, and then in eutherians, we see that there it's random. It's it, paternal maternal markers do not hang out on the uh, X chromosomes and whether or not you're expressing your maternal or your paternal in any given cell is, is random there. We also see the formation of that exist um, uh, region and gene that uh, is not present in marsupials. So that um, sort of epigenetic pathway of silencing there is, is diff much different in eutherians than it is in marsupials.